Akira's face seems to collapse. It's an utterly unbefitting expression for someone so rowdy and headstrong. The folks didn't call you yet. Oh, we are dealing with it. As Lily shakes her head cluelessly, I look to Hideki to see if he knows anything about this. A simple shrug is his only answer. For a moment, Akira ponders what to do before smiling once again. The fact that she can hide her emotion so quickly and eff effectively is then settling. What are you trying to say, fool? I show no emotions to anyone. Hey, Shorty, sorry, but could you hang with yourself for a while? Really? Are you a vampire, Hideki? No. Oh, you're boring then. He nods and waves her off. Akira placing an arm on Lily's shoulder as she guides her away and out of earshot. And so, I'm alone with Shorty. <laughs> oh, run, bitch, run! So, nice weather, isn't it? Oh god, we're back to this. It seems so. Da da da. I guess they dumped us. Indeed. My god. This is like Texas when you s is send a long ass reply and then the person just goes, K. And I'm just like, Really? <laughs> Nothing to add, just a simple K. How, ca how can I c continue a conversation on K? What a Partial attempt at small talk. I've got no idea of how to speak to this guy, and his robotic responses aren't helping. Blood and blood and a stone come to mind. A blood sacrifice? Without another word, he begins. Oh Jesus Christ! Pardon me. He begins to rock on his feet, in an obvious gesture of boredom with this discussion. He really is like a little kid, despite his serious demeanor. Suspecting the conversation suspecting the conversation over, I decide to accomplish what I came here to do in the first place. I'm going to search for a present. Coming? Not much else to do. Oh, we can see Griswold. But we're in the same area. In a little while we come to a small shop beside a convenience store. Griswold! For once the store windows aren't filled with electricity. Electronics and computer games, but dolls, stuffed bears, and all manner of woodcrafted out odd ties. This dimension, Hisao, you would be surprised how right that line is. Of Leto's Antiques. Griswold! An antique store. Well, if there's anything in this town that suits Hanako, I guess it'd be here. I reach for the old looking door handle but pull back at the last minute as I realise my companion's gone adrift. Not coming in? I'll just be in the newsstand for a while. Don't mind me. His voice makes it painfully clear he has zero interest. Zero. Motherfucking zero. In what's in the store. And that he doesn't feel obligated to follow me. I'm Lelouch of Britannia, bitches. I'm fabulous. As he wanders off without another word, I push the thick wooden door and enter the store, a bell above me ringing out. Ding ding ding! The musty smell of old books and wooden sh shelves is distinct distinctively anachronistic. Anachronistic, probably. Butchered. I looked at the counter beside the door. The gr the greying man behind it sits there silently, reading a tattered book. He certainly fits the look of the place. Slowly wandering through the... Oh god. Asiles. I said it like that. The person I'm reminded of as I inspect each handcrafted or imported oddity in turn isn't Hanako. A doll! Crouching down, I examine an ancient oak desk inside the shop window. No! Chess set! Oh, wait, we can't afford that. Wait, no. The doll was the expensive one. At least 30 dolls, all vary varying wildly in size and, mi and make. The only similarity between them is the long Victorian dress they wear. I turn the price tag of one that looks to be about waist height. It's not in my price bracket. At all. 
What, your price bracket isn't 20,000 yen? <laughs> I do the same to each of them, getting more and more depressed as they get smaller and smaller in size. Oh dear god. That is, until I reach it. Until I reach the very smallest one. It's affordable. It's affordable, just, yet of quality making with long a burn. Auburn hair and a little blue dress. I decide that it's the kind of present Hanukkah would appreciate. Pretty looking and far from gaudy. Gaudy. After I carefully pick it up, I decide to keep looking around the store. I'm not sure whether it's because I like the atmosphere or out of simple curiosity. Peeking around the corner before I go to the next uh, uh, asyl, I see that the shells in this one are are stocked with wooden toys, from toy cars to intricate automatons, automatons, there we are, tucked behind a line of nutcrackers, I notice a little plain wooden box. It feels surprisingly light as I pick it up with my free hand. Elfin light comes to mind. The lid only needs the smallest movement to pop open. The little metal drum inside beginning to rotate immediately. For a second on end, I simply stand there listening to the palm sized melody. As it plays, I take the tiny price tag in my fingers and bring it up to my face. The minuscule curve. curvis. cursive. cursive writing taking some effort to read. It's affordable. Sort of. Grimacing slightly, I close the lid and make my way to the counter with the doll and music box in hand. When I lay the two hello Griswold, how are you? When I lay the two on the counter, the man behind it sits up and takes stock of them. He doesn't hide he doesn't hide very well his surprise at someone of my age buying them. It's painful, but I hand over the money for the two and leave the store with small with a small upper Q bag in hand. Butchered, Hideki be being there takes me by surprise. Oh, hi. I thought you'd be you'd be at the newsstand. Akira gave me a call. She's waiting for us at the fountain with Lily. At least that solves the issue of, to tr of trying to find them again. We head off back to the fountain. Hideki's immaculate posture and pre presentation despite his appearance makes for a strange contrast even as we walk Lily and Akira stand stand Lily and Akira stand there waiting for us their faces hard to read Lily's not so much hey you ready to go shorty <laughs> that smiley face Hideki's mood seems to improve as he rejoins her oh, I guess they like each other see you Lily yes now Tell Hanako I said happy birthday. Well, we will. Bye. Goodbye, Akira. Nothing to Hideki then. And with that, the two disappear into the f f fracas of the afternoon city crowd. Turning to Lily, I notice she's carrying a small bag. It's now that I realise why her disposition felt different from before. While Lily's typically the type to wear her emotions on her sleeve, her expression and tone are clouded and difficult to read. It's more than a little off-putting, but given the effort she's making to hide her emotions, I doubt she wants to be cornered on why she's feeling this way. Already bought Hanako a present? Yes. Have you? Yeah. Shall we head back to the bus stop then? Okay. There should be... There should be a bus to take to Yamaku pretty soon. And with that, we begin to walk. And face. No, we don't. It feels strange compared to before. Lily's hand on my forearm feels unusually tense, and the whole atmosphere is extraordinarily awkward. The silence continues for a long while. I really don't like seeing her like this. Hanako's birthday party is going to have to be held earlier. Is the fourth going to be alright for you? I have no other possible obligations anyway, so I reflexively nod. Only afterwards do I remember that doing so is pointless and quickly answer so by speech. 
She tries to collect herself, a task that looks almost pitiable in how plain it is to see how distant her thoughts are. Shut up, Cars. Sorry, Hisao. You said that the, you said the bus would be coming soon, right? That's right. But now, but now that she says that, I have no, I have an idea. Actually, do you have anything to do later today? I don't believe so. Why do you ask? This is the point where I'd normally take your hand and rush you somewhere, but even without that, you'll have to trust me. Okay? I take her hand and gently lead her, lead her on. Her distant face replaced by one of mild surprise and curiosity. I have a funny idea where- Yeah, we're here. As the waitress sets the cup of tea and cup of coffee that I'd ordered onto the table, I thank her before she takes her leave. If we have the coffee, I kill you. Truth be told, I really lucked out in- in fighting this cafe. I didn't really know where I was going. Rather, I was just looking for any cafe that looked relatively nice. Oh, we did that last time, buddy. Having managed to recover a little, Lily tentatively sips at her cup as I take a long gulp of the coffee in front of me. As I ho hoped, her face lights up as she realizes what flavor it is. Ah, this is wonderful. Isa, how did you know that this was... I'd asked for a French vanilla black tea, heading, heeding my bets that it would be her favourite flavour, or at least one she liked. While I don't really know much about tea, it sounded like one she might appreciate. On the basis of her liking vanilla ice cream, a tea connoisseur, a tea connoisseur I'm definitely not, it was a lucky guess. You really like tea, don't you? She puts her teacup down and gives a tiny nod. That familiar sm small smile thankfully perched on her face once again. Drinking tea is calming, I think. With that amount you drink, are you sure you're not addicted to it? <coughs> uh. <coughs> uh. <coughs> Caffeine addiction's pretty common nowadays. What? You know what I want to say. Tea has caffeine. Since when? I've, ne I've never. I never knew this. Did I ever say I wasn't? She lets out a giggle as my head drops. We all have our vices, I, su I suppose, and there are worse things to be addicted to. Thank you. Friends fill in the black tea, huh? I'll have to remember that. For a while, we both silently drink. It's comforting to have someone like her nearby in such new surround in such new surroundings, even if it's just the two of us sitting in silence. Just the two of us. I begin to wonder if this is, if this feeling is the same for her until she sets down her cup. I'm lost already. Right. I'm lost now. What? So. Do you mind if I ask you a slightly odd question? That depends on the question, I guess. I was wondering... What... I was wondering what your favourite colour is. Everyone has one, after all. Purple. I almost replied before realising why the seemingly mundane question is actually quite strange. My favourite colour... But... Oh god, she gives a pounding look, wanting me to answer anyway. While the, an while the answer seems unavoidably wasted on her, there isn't any harm in giving it. I've always had a, f had a thing for green. I'd say that's my favourite. Green it is. What things do you think of when contemplating that colour? I suppose grass fields and trees in the summer. The army as well, with camouflage. Men always seem to like the military. But that sounds like a nice colour. A very nice colour. She nods her head a little, as if approving of the choice. Considering how foreign the concept of colour is to her mind, labelling it by association seems reasonable enough. If everyone has a favourite colour, then what's yours? White. I'm told that the colours, that's the colour of snow and ice cream. 